Quest, good morning. How you doing? You enjoy your Christmas? Nice time with family and friends? That's good. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. Listen, I want to tell you how excited I am to be here. Obviously, I'm not John Kenny. He's enjoying some time with family and friends, and um, I'm so happy for him. It's important for us as leaders and pastors to get rest and um, be able to relax. And so I hope he's enjoying himself. Uh, my name is Unique Mackey. I have the pleasure and privilege of serving on the speaker team here at Quest. I am also a church planner. Um, we planted a church here in the Augusta community that Quest helps to sponsor. So we meet here on Saturday nights from 6 p.m. To 715, you're welcome to come out and kick it with us on Saturday nights. We're a, a wild bunch of, of people. Uh, we call ourselves uh, Chosen. And so uh, we've got a special event um, I want to invite you to on New Year's Eve. If you are here in the city and you want to come hang out, we will be right here from 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. on New Year's Eve. I'm an awesome organization here in the city is helping to sponsor that event. Anybody been to Metro Diner? Metro Diner, yeah. Well, um, they will be here serving free breakfast, uh, hash browns, French toast, bacon, eggs, sausage, grits. And so if you want a nice, hot, free breakfast and you want to hang out with some great people, we're going to have some performances. Uh, I will be speaking briefly at the end. Um, our theme for our year is uh, 2020 vision, uh, 2020 for year 2020, walking out our new year with clarity. And so I want you to know that you are absolutely welcome to come out and have some fun with us. It's an absolutely free event, and I would love to see your beautiful faces here. I want to talk to you all about what I think is going to take for you to actually have a new year. Because a new year doesn't automatically mean a new year. Oftentimes we get very excited about the new year, as we should. It's, it's an opportunity to transition. It's an opportunity to engage in, in, in some new things. But here's what I want to let everyone know. Just because the year changes doesn't automatically mean our situation changes. But because a new situation, growth, purpose, prosperity, doesn't happen as a matter of time. Growth, purpose, it doesn't happen as a matter of time. It happens as a matter of trust. If, if growth, maturity, purpose, prosperity, if it happened as a matter of time, those of us who are adults would automatically be in purpose. But we know a lot of adults, we know a lot of people who are grown physically who are not grown mentally. And so I want you to know that 2020 will only mean a new year if we walk into 2020 with a new mindset. Here's an interesting statistic according to the New York Post. Before the first month of the year has even come to an end, most people have given up on their new year resolution. So before the end of the first month... <laughs> The commitment that we made to ourselves or that commitment that we made to Christ has come to an end. Why? Because a, a new year, growth, purpose, prosperity is not a matter of time. It's a matter of trust. Let me prove it to you. Numbers 32, 13 says the Lord's anger burned against Israel and he made them wander in the wilderness for 40 years until the whole generation of those who had done evil in his sight were gone. They wandered for 40 years in the same place, the same situation, the same predicament. They were in the same place for 40 years and nothing changed. They saw the peach drop for 40 years in a row and nothing changed. 
they had 40 New Year's Eve celebrations and nothing changed. They made, they, they, they made the commitment every single year to do something different, see something different, be something different. And 40 years went by and they saw themselves in the same situation. Wandering in the wilderness. And I'm not here to beat you up. I'm here to build you up. But I do want to ask you a question. Did you spend some time in 2019 wandering? Did you spend part of your year in some situations that you shouldn't have been in? Were, 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 were you arguing about the same thing with your spouse? Fellas, is it still hard for you to put the top on the toothpaste? How, how, how long have you been making the same amount of money? How, how, how many times have you been looked over for that promotion that you believe God desires for you to have, but you hadn't prepared yourself for it, so you've been wandering in your career? How long have you been taking the same classes over and over and over again? How many years have you been a freshman? <laughs> Israel is a type and shadow of the, the New Testament church. Israel was God's people, and Israel was caught in sin in Egypt. Egypt was a type and shadow of sin, and so they were in bondage to Egypt. Moses was sent as a deliverer. Moses is a type and shadow of Jesus Christ. So God sent Moses to deliver the children of Israel from bondage, i.e. sin, in Egypt. He rescued them, and he wanted to take them to a place of pleasure, a place of peace, a place of purpose, but they wandered in the wilderness because even though God changed their physical location, they were not able to get to the place of rest because their mental situation stayed the same. Hebrews 3.19 says, so we see that because of their unbelief, their, their mindset of doubt, they were not able to enter his rest. Here's what God wants you to know this morning. He has a place of rest for you. He has a place of peace. He has a place of purpose that he wants you to enter in. And you will not get to that place of peace and purpose doubting God. Because you can get more education, you can make more money, you can get a better job, you can get a new boo, you can get in a new relationship, but your physical situation, if even if it changes, if our mindset does not change, our new situation will become like the old. Romans 12, 2 is actually one of my favorite scriptures. It says, do not copy the behavior and customs of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you will be able to see God's good, pleasing and perfect will for your life. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but be ye what? But be ye what? By the renewing of your. So here's the thing. He Paul is writing this letter. And he's writing it to Christians. So those of us that are Christians, hear this. You can have salvation and it never change your physical life. Listen, he said, be, be ye transformed. He's talking to Christians. So he's saying that there's a group of Christians and their lives have not changed. So you can actually have Jesus in your life and your, your physical situation will never change. Why? Because salvation won't lead to change until salvation turns into mental transformation. See, your situation will never change until you allow your salvation to lead to mental transformation. Your marriage will never get better until you allow salvation to change how you treat your spouse. Your money situation will never change until you allow your salvation to determine how you handle your money. Your relationships will never change until you allow your salvation to determine how you treat people. People. You can actually be saved and stay in the same situation. 
The, the reason I mention that to you is because I, I believe that many of us are frustrated even at God and with our faith because we're saying, God, I, I, I go to Quest every Sunday. Matter of fact, I even serve and, and I don't see my situation changing. And you're becoming frustrated with your faith and frustrated with God. But can I suggest that maybe the frustration is coming because there's been no mental transformation? Here, here it is. You're going to want to get this in your note if you're uh, below 25. Tweet this for me. Salvation without mental transformation leads to a stagnant situation. Oh, man, that's... Let me <laughs> Salvation with no mental transformation leads to a stagnant... Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> here it is. The holy people in the middle. Here we go. Salvation with no mental leads to a stagnant. Oh, that's good. Listen, if we don't change the way that we think, our situation stays the same. God says, I gave you my son and he's actually living within you. You have the power to make your life better, but you will only change your life to the degree that you can change the way that you think. One person likes it. I appreciate that. Thank you, Swings. I appreciate that, Sweetie. That's so kind of you. We didn't change the way we thought about some things in 2019. So those things didn't change. So if our lives are going to get better, and if we don't, if, if we don't want the new year to mean the same old stuff, we have to change our mindset from a mindset of doubt to a mindset of trust. Proverbs 23, 7 says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. For as she thinks in her heart, so is she. Y'all probably say this before, but it's worth repeating. Um, our heads and, and, and our hearts will, will lead to what we do with our hands. And so the Old Testament uses the word heart and mind interchangeably. And so what the writer of Proverbs, Solomon, is saying is he's saying that, that our mindset determines our circumstances. So he's saying, as you think, so are you. As you think, so is your marriage. As you think, so is your ministry. As you think, so is your money. As you think, so are your relationships. So even if your situation changes, if your mindset doesn't change with it, the new thing will become like the old thing because the most important part of your life is your mindset. You can have a good situation and turn it bad because of a messed up mindset. You can have a great relationship and turn it into something negative. Why? Because of a messed up mindset. You can be given a million dollars and lose it and become broke again. Why? Because because of a messed up mindset. Your, your situation doesn't need as much of your focus as your mindset does. We spend too much time trying to change our situation. I want more money this year. I want a better marriage this year. I want a new bay this year. But let me help you. Your situation doesn't change even if the physical part of it changes because the most important part of what's happening in your life is not the outward, it's the inward. Because as you think, so are you. I don't want to. I don't want to leave you there. Here, here's how we change. Here's, this is how we. This is the way I believe God wants us to live our lives as we finish strong and start our new year fast. Here it is, Proverbs three, five, and six. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not upon your own understanding in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not upon your own understanding and in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight the first step to finishing strong so we can start the new year on the right foot is trusting God trust is the prerequisite to purpose. 
He says, if, if, if you want a straight path, if you don't want to wander in the wilderness, trust is where we have to start because trust is where we get our power from. Hebrews eleven six says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. That word impossible means without power. He's saying, you don't have the power to please me without power. Faith. So you can have more money, but that doesn't necessarily mean you will please me because you can have more money and not have more faith. You can get more education. You can trade in the GED for the PhD, but that does not actually mean I'm going to be pleased. Why? Because if you got more education and you didn't do it for me, I'm not happy with it. He's saying the first step to purpose is trusting in me. Isn't that interesting? Because it doesn't say without finances, it's impossible to please God. That's good news for some of us, because some of us don't have money. <laughs> Isn't that good? <laughs> that you, you can be broke and still make God happy. You, you can be eating ramen noodles and hot sauce and have a filet mignon faith, because God says, I'm not looking at your bank account. I'm looking at your Hey, it doesn't say without a big church. Now, y'all have a big church, and that's good. But he says you, you can have a, a, something, a small ministry and make me happy. It, it doesn't say without a, a Ph.D. You, you, you could be a high school dropout and make God happy because he doesn't look at things the way man looks at things. He doesn't look at the cover like man looks at. He looks at the content. And he says you can have money. You can have cars. You can have clothes. You can have big houses. But that's stuff doesn't make me happy. What makes me happy is a person that leans not on their own understanding. When there's a decision to make, they come to me with prayer. When there's something to do, they seek godly counsel. If you want to please me, operate in faith. We strive for stuff that doesn't even please him. That's why some of us are frustrated because we said, God, I, I went to all the conferences this year. I, I read all the books this year. I, I did more. And God said, maybe I, weren't, I was not asking you to do more. Maybe you should have been focused more on your faith. Were you trusting me? Were you honoring me? Here it is. We can be productive and not please him. Here's one of the scariest verses in, in scripture. It's Matthew 7, 22 through 23. It says, on judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. Jesus says, you can even do ministry without me. It's not just about what we do. It's about why we do it. He said, you, you prophesied in my name, but it was really for your name. You, you really weren't doing what you were doing for me. It really were, were not actions through faith. You were really doing it because you wanted a career. You were really doing it because you wanted more money. You were really doing it because you wanted more popularity. And if you weren't doing it because of me, if I was not the cause, if I was not the catalyst, you don't get credit for it. I, I, I never seen anywhere in scripture where Jesus bragged on anything other than faith. Matthew 15, he, 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 he talks about a woman who he blessed. He says, I'm going to bless you because your faith was great. Y'all remember the centurion story, uh, the st story about the, the Roman centurion who had a servant that he wanted healed. And he said, Jesus, you don't even have to come to my house. I'm not even good enough to meet with you, but I understand how authority and power works. So why don't you just speak healing from where you at? And Jesus looks and said, I've never seen faith like this in all of Israel. The only time God has ever been amazed is with faith. Here it is. I want you to understand that trust gives you power. When you actually put 
faith in God, you get access to another level of power. But trust also gets rid of our pride because it says trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. He, he, he says that, that trust in God will cause us not to lean on our own understanding. Trust gives me power, but trust should also get rid of our pride. See, here's the issue. Oftentimes, when we come to, to a crossroad in our life, we don't lean on Christ. We lean on our own understanding. When, when God says, nope, you're not ready for another relationship, sweetheart, we say, but he's cute. And we end up leaning on our own understanding. When God says, nope, don't you take that promotion. You don't spend enough time with your, enough time with your family as it is. We say, God, did you not see the offer? It's six figures. It's a month of vacation. And God says, nope, it's going to take you away from your family. You're chasing finances when you should be focused on your family. But because they offered you six figures, you begin to lean on your own understanding. God says you can't live a, a, a life of a straight path if you're not going to trust me with your decision making. Your life is a sum total of the decisions that you make. He says, when you get to a crossroad, you can't lean on your own understanding. Here's something that you may have never heard, but when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, it actually lowered my self-esteem. When, when I gave my life to Christ, it did not give me more confidence in me. When I gave my life to Jesus Christ, it actually lowered my self-esteem. I know that sounds strange to say but because we live in a, in a world where we're supposed to be self-confident. We're supposed to believe in ourselves. Let me help you with that. We're not called as Christians to believe in ourselves. We are called to believe in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when I met Jesus Christ, I realized how different I was from him. I realized that my wisdom didn't line up with his. I realized that my physical strength was nothing to be compared with his spiritual strength. When I saw God, I realized that I need to stop leaning on my own understanding because my life can't go in the direction that he wants it to go if I'm stuck on myself. He, he, he says, I want you to lean not upon your own understanding. And I want to probably uh, add some clarity to some, some things that we've faced in 2019, but because I believe that that's why some of us met certain struggles. God had to, to, to take some stuff away that we were leaning on. Maybe some of us lost a job in 2019 and we were frustrated, but don't be frustrated. God's going to provide for you, but he just had to recalibrate your faith because you started leaning too much on the money. You used to pray, but now you just check your bank account. You used to ask for his permission. Now you just make sure you got it and then you go get it. God said, nope, I got to move some stuff out of her life because if she keeps on this path, she'll end up in a place that I never called her to be. So sometimes God will remove stuff. Sometimes God will remove people because his goal is to get us to depend on him. God's trying to get us to where David was when he said in Psalm 44, 6, I do not trust in my bow. I do not count on my sword to save me. David was a warrior and a worshiper. I love what he says here. He says, I, I do not trust in my bow. I, I have a bow. Um, I do not count on my sword. I have a sword. David was a warrior. He says, I'm not going to be ignorant here. I'm not going into the battle without my weapon, my, my weapons. But I, I, I know that without God and, and these weapons, I, I, I can't do what God has called and created 
me to do. So I'm not telling you to be ignorant in 2020. I'm not telling you to quit your job, but I am telling you don't trust in it. I'm telling you that, that the money, that the position, that the title, that the education, that's not the key to the straight path. The key to the straight path is am I trusting God with all that I have? I, I, I may have some education, but I'm not arrogant enough to think it can save me. I may have a few dollars in the bank, but I'm not arrogant enough to think it can save me. Some of us have some testimonies to where we can say, I've been in some situations that money couldn't get me out of. I've had some issues that finances could not solve. And if it were, were not for my relationship with God, I wouldn't have made it through. He, he's saying... It's nothing wrong with having stuff. But am I trusting in it? Is my faith in her or is my faith in him? That's why some of you need to stay single. Because as soon as, as you get a, a date, you stop showing up to church on Sunday morning. And it shows that your faith is in who you date. That, that's why some of us need to, need to slow down and, and do less. That may be my testimony. Because it's not, it's not about how much you can accomplish. It's about are you trusting God with your decision making? And, and, and are you doing what God has called and created you to do? Because when we walk into 2020, we're, we, it will only mean a new year, new situations, growth, etc. If we walk in it with a new mindset, a mindset of trust and a mindset of submission to God. Here it is. Trust gives me power. Everybody say power. Trust gets rid of my pride. Everybody say pride. And trust gets me on a straight path. Everybody say straight path. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not upon your own understanding. Don't miss that word all. If you read it too fast, you'll miss it. He's saying, don't give me half. Give me all. Don't trust me with your money, but don't trust me with your marriage. Don't trust me with your boo and don't trust me with your bank account. Don't trust me with your ministry and don't trust me with your children. Don't, don't trust me with your children and not trust me with your spouse. He's saying, I need everything. And, and, and once you lean not on your own understanding and in all your ways, everything you do, every decision that you make, every person that you date, every job job that you entertain. If you submit it to me, I will make your path straight. Oh, you, you're not that excited about that because you forgot about geometry class. Geometry taught us that the quickest way to get from a point A to a point B is Oh, there you go. So listen to what God is saying. This is good. He's saying, I never created you to wander. He's saying, I don't want my children to live a circumference type of life. When you have a relationship with Jesus, there's no excuse to live a life of circles, to go around the same place year over year over year. God is saying, if you submit to me, I will take you out that life of, of those circles and I will will put you on a straight path. I want to take you from where you are to where I called you to be with the least stress possible. I want to take you from where you are to where you call to be in the most efficient way possible. I want to take you from where you are to where you are called to be in the easiest way possible. I don't want my children to live in stress. I don't want my children to live in pain and struggle every day of their life. My goal for you is to take you from where you are to where you call to be in the simplest way possible. The quickest distance from point A to B is a straight line. God wants to help us, but he can't help us if we don't trust him. Here's a, a, a quick true story. <clears throat> I was leaving the office one day and it was 
raining slightly. And so I'm leaving the office. And as I turn down the, the, the side street that runs behind Washington Road, I see a, 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 a young lady, probably in her uh, 40s, uh, 50s, but she's carrying a lot of baggage. I mean, she had a couple bags in this hand. She had on a backpack, if I remember correctly, and she was also dragging a, a suitcase walking down this side street. And so I, I, I pulled, I, I drove by her, and then I busted a quick U-turn, came back around and rolled down my window. And I said, can I help you? I, I would love to help you get to where you're going. She looked at me to make sure that I had her undivided attention. Or she had my undivided attention. I, I, she looked at me in my eyes and she gave me the best half of a peace sign. You'll get it by the time you get home, yeah. <laughs> she gave me the best half of a peace sign that you have ever seen in your life. It was almost like she practiced before she left home. Like, it was so crisp. You've never seen a figure this straight. I mean, it was... <laughs> And, and y'all know how silly I am, so I begin to laugh profusely. <laughs> and, and so I roll up my window because I realize that obviously she doesn't trust me enough to let me help her. And so I pull off and I couldn't help but think about how this would preach. Because many of us are walking around with all this baggage. Many of us are trying to get to one place to the destiny that we feel we're called to be in. And God is rolling up on us with a smile saying, I would love to help you get rid of some of that baggage and make it to your next destination. And us in our ignorance and our pride, we are giving the Holy Spirit half of a peace sign. We're telling God, God, I can do it by myself. We're telling God, God, I'm going to carry this baggage by myself. We're telling God, God, I don't trust you enough to let me help you. To, and, and so we're walking around with all this baggage and we're walking around in circles and we're struggling living the same old life and God is saying trust me let me help you I love you I can get you from where you are to where you call to be in the quickest way possible I love you too much to let you lug all that baggage around but some of us because of our lack of trust are walking around with all this baggage when we should be trusting in God and letting him take us around Here's a question. Will you ride with God this year? Will you trust him in your marriage and stop trying to fix it to yourself? Will you trust God with your money and stop trying to do it all on your own? Will you trust God with your children? Will you trust God with your career? Will you trust God with your ministry? Because God is saying, I'm, I'm pulling over and I'm here to help you, but I'm not going to make you get in. I could have got out the car and, 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 and just snatched her stuff up, but I'm too much of a gentleman for that. God is too much of a gentleman to make you give him anything. And so I believe that in 2020, God is saying, I'm going to take you to the destination. But you got to be willing to trust me. Dear Heavenly Father, we submit to you now. Asking that you will help us to trust you. And to lean not on our own understanding. And in all our ways acknowledge you. So you can direct our path. God, we don't want to live wandering in the wilderness. And we are hoping that the new year means a new and better situation. So we're asking for your supernatural strength. Because we can't do it. 
so that we can live the life that you called us to live in 2020. Amen.